Pipe user. My name is Gary of Gary's Wares. I make wooden pipes out of exotic hardwoods. Today, I'm going to show you how to make something I've gotten a lot of comments about. It's a technique I've developed. Uh, it's a twisted pipe. Uh, now, you may be asking yourself, what is a twisted pipe? Well, yeah, pretty cool. If you want to make one of these, you have to make a decision. You must make a choice, and you must make it now. Will you choose to make a six inch pipe, an eight inch pipe, or a 12 inch pipe? Choose now. Excellent choice. If you've chosen to be ambitious and you're going to go with a two inch or with a 12 inch pipe, make your bowl blank to the following dimensions two inches by one and a half by one and three quarters. If you're going to make an eight inch pipe, make your bowl blank to the dimensions of one and three quarters to one and a half by one and three quarters. If you're going to make a six inch pipe like me, make your bowl blank to one and a half by one and a quarter by one and three quarters. Let's get started. Here's a bowl blank and it's for a six inch pipe. It's already pre-drilled. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to record me drilling it because it's not very interesting, it's sort of technical, but first, let's go over the physics of a pipe. So this is a pipe, well, this is a diagram of a pipe, and you see here, this is the bowl, here's the material, here's the flame, and the screen. When you use a wood pipe, you always want to use a screen. Um, so the way that it works, this is pretty basic, but it's worth going over is you inhale and that draws the flame into the material the material combusts and it is then inhaled this is a diagram of a chillum that is got sawdust on it uh it works the same way um except it doesn't have this bend it doesn't have any bend at all it's a straight shot inhale draws the flame in the material material combusts yada 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 now when you make your bowl what you want to avoid is these corners here, these, these, this is no good. You don't want this. <clears throat> what you want is a concave, uh, you want to drill a concave hole. You don't want to drill one like this because then stuff gets caught in the corners and then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You don't know. It's a no-go. This is a no-go. Boo. So that means that foster bits, they're out. Regular bits, they're out. So. What you want to use is a cove bit, or I think they're called a, a box core bit, like this. It has a, a concave, leaves a concave hole, and that's what you want to use. This one is a um, half inch wide, it's an eighth inch shank, and um, yeah, that's what you want. Now when I make um, when I make the, the bowl blanks, I make the hole uh, five, well I drill uh, for half inch and then I widen it to five eighths of an inch later on. So back to what I was saying earlier. Good. I'm glad we got that squared away. So I have, uh, the next step is you want to drill, is you want to cut out the uh, segments for your stem. And I've used um, uh, black and white ebony and gabin ebony. And I'm going to lay it out like that, and that's what the pipe is going to be like. Um, now, if you have, uh, if you're going to do a six inch pipe, you want to use seven segments. If you're going to do an eight inch pipe, you want to use uh, 10 segments. If you're doing a 12 inch pipe, you want to use 16 segments. Now, you see the math comes out pretty, pretty evenly, except for the six inch one. And the reason I made it shorter like that is because I want to be able to make it so I can fit it into a six inch clamp. And so, I'm going to guarantee myself a, an eighth of an inch clearance. But the thing is, um, these are cut at, th at five eighths of an inch. Um, they won't necessarily be five eighths of an inch because they have to be flattened and sanded on something a bit like that. It's a um, um, rigid oscillating spindle sander with edging attachment. You're going to pretty much definitely need one of those and so once you sand it and get everything smooth it's going to you're going to take away a little bit from the total but you know you're not making pipes by the foot here you know you're making a, a cool pipe so <clears throat> once you cut out the segments draw a line connecting each corner 
and where those lines intersect is going to be the middle. And then you drill a 3 16 inch hole uh, through the middle of each piece. And that's how you do that. So next part is gluing. So I've given the pieces a good sanding um, with the 220 grit. Uh, it doesn't need to be very fine, but it needs to be pretty smooth. Uh, so I would recommend using a metal dowel like this and um, using that to line your pieces up with. And then just take a piece with some glue on it and slide it down the thing. And then press on it. Make sure it's adhering properly. And you just do that over and over. There. Now all you have to do is carefully remove the metal dowel. Uh, ah, there. Get the glue off. Then put it in the clamp. That should do it. And then we wait an hour. One hour later. So it's been an hour. And everything seems to be good. And when you do these, you want to make sure that they're not clogged before you go any further, because if they're clogged or there's something in the way, then what's the point? So, shh, yay. Shh, shh, shh. So now I'm going to take my magic marker and draw some lines. Okay, I think I got them all. All right. So what this does, and the reason that you um, that you stagger them is so that you can um, you draw a line from the middle of the edge of one block to where that block intersects the next block, and from there to the middle of the edge of the next one, and so on and so forth. And you see, it makes a spiral pattern. So now. Now comes the actual sanding part. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're um, cr actually creating the twist and, and sanding this down and shaping it is along these sort of lanes that you've made with the twist, there's these corners. There's one here, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, you know, just all the way around. You want to knock those corners off before you can really start shaping it. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see I've taken off the corners along here. It might be a little easier to, to see now what I was talking about. Uh, now I'm going to go along and along each edge, I'm going to sort of make a, a little path that's wide, that's as wide as um, the, um, the sanding bit. It's going to make a little path down one way and one down the other way, and there's going to be a little groove in the middle. So, uh, now I've done that, and you can see this little groove that goes along here. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to take that groove out, and I'm, I'm going to actually shape the, the twist, actually um, give it sort of a, a concave feel. Yeah. And there you go. That's the basic, that's basically it. Now, I'm not sure if you can really tell. Uh, there's like, um, you can't really see it, and the, the camera doesn't pick it up. There are little, um, the sanding drum, because it's so coarse, uh, leaves behind these little grooves, these little lines. They're not very attractive once you look at it real close up, but we'll get that once we get to the um, medium and finer grit. But now, I've got to take care of the rest of the twist.
Okay, so I've done three of the sides so far. And maybe it's a little clearer what I mean about the corners now that uh, most of it is gone. What I'm talking about is, you know, this right here, right here, 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 here. All that needs to go. Ebony is tough to get through. Almost there. And got it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, that's what I did first. That's what you're going to do all the way down. All the way down the twist. You're going to do this. On this side and this on this side, the same way. That's how you do it. So I've made um, a groove all the way down one side of it, and now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of this particular twist. So I've gone down both sides again, and now I've just got this groove here. I just got to take care of it. Uh, when you do this, um, go in sort of a circular pattern and that'll help get the most that'll, that'll help ensure evenness okay so now i'm done uh, pretty much shaping it and we've got a nice twist but there's two things the mouthpiece needs to be shaped and if you look if you look along here um there are like spikes along the uh the twist uh, like there's one you know, right there there's a really pronounced one um, <clears throat> so you gotta knock those out when you do this go back and forth don't go up and down because if you go up and down it'll get caught uh, in these little valleys and you'll end up taking away more than you want to so make sure you go back and forth like this so, I managed to get all those, and now all I gotta do is shape the mouthpiece. And there you go. <clears throat> That's how, well, you, well, I didn't really explain how to do the mouthpiece. You just sort of round everything over, and then you'll end up with these spikes uh, on the side. Uh, you just take those out. Um, I like to leave the sides a little wider than the top and bottom because of, you know, uh, it it's more conforming to the mouth and so now um now I just have to clean it up next thing we're gonna do is shape the bowl um first i'm gonna well i'm gonna take it over to the oscillating spindle center but first i'm gonna take the edges off to save my belt center some work So it's looking a lot more like a pipe now. Um, and you can see real clearly now, and I'm close up, these nasty marks I was talking about. It doesn't look very good when you get close up. Way back here though. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty cool if it will ever focus. Yeah, it looks good. But way up close. That, yeah, now, see. And those things, those marks are all over the place. I mean, they're just, they're, it's just it's just ugly it's just ugly so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, try to clean it up as much as I can with the coarse grit which I think is about 60 grit um, then I'm going to change bits to that one and I'm going to widen the hole to the proper size and then I'm going to hit it with the medium grit and then we'll see what I'm left with
So that's what I'm left with. <clears throat> and you can see it's a lot better, but it's you can still see the marks. You know, if you look closely, you see like right there. I should have taken care of better care of that. But uh, now I'm gonna hit it with the fine grit, and it's gonna look a little something like this. So that's what it looks like when it's had the fine um, fine sanding treatment and you can see there's still like little marks um, that is gonna come no matter uh, no matter what if you use a rotary tool so next step a bit of elbow grease and that's what it looks like after you've taken some uh, taken 220 this is a 220 grit sandpaper to it and that is what it looks like and it's vastly improved now you can still see there's little marks here and there um but you know one time i asked my uh buddy stevie who's a painter i said you know when do you know when you're done with a painting and he said that's a good question when do you know when you're done sanding uh you know is it worth it to to sand that out mm, i'm gonna say no but there you go and it well it is missing something, isn't it? There! And sand it up a little bit. Ta -da. And so, this is what it looks like after you take a buffing wheel to it. Um, this is a good idea because at the very least it gets um, sawdust off, but I think it also polishes it to a small degree, and you definitely want that before you finish it. This, ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is my favorite part. You get to see what it's going to look like. Finished. Ooh, look at that. Yes, sir. And you just put the finish on. I use um, salad bowl finish because um, it's just, it's safer. Uh, I suppose you could use men wax or some other sort of thing like that. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, salad bowl finish is very good because it's non-toxic. Um, it's food safe. Not that you'll be eating any food off of this, but the safer the better. And... Get a little bit more here. Do -do. Don't want to miss any spots. And you wipe it on. And then you wipe it off. Do -do -do. Just like that. And then get yourself a handy dandy drying rack like this and slide it on and let it wait let it dry that's what i'm going to say let it dry 30 minutes later here it is um after i took a buffing wheel to it and let it dry for 30 minutes it's kind of shiny uh but it could be shinier so put another coat on Then we let it dry. Some time later. There it is. And it's 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 beautiful. And that internet user is how a twisted pipe is made now this one is is sort of basic it looks really cool i mean it looks really cool i'm really glad i made this um but it's pretty simple it's just alternating between black and white ebony and gavin ebony and back and forth it looks cool it's kind of got a i don't know like a beetle juicy i don't know it's it looks cool but it's it's sort of basic but this is what a six inch pipe looks like and this is what an eight inch pipe looks like and this oh mm. 
this is what a 12 inch pipe looks like now i i like playing around with like sort of the patterns and the themes like with this one it starts off with tulip wood black and white ebony what is that uh i think it's uh it's uh zircote bacote olive wood cocobolo ebony uh, african black wood i think and then a little piece of wenge and then the pattern repeats yeah i like playing around like that and with this one um this one i tried to go from light to dark so olive wood down here ebony down here and this is sort of a transition you know throughout uh you could also make if you want a chillum um i'm not going to give you the dimensions for the bowl blank for a chillum because come on you could do something for yourself right right yeah you're independent so with this one i liked um i sort of went with um wood that has very defined very very obvious grain pattern to it sort of a you know um, a stripe stripey sort of theme throughout so you can play around with things like that if you want to make one yourself and now i'm sure you're saying to yourself gary why are you making all these pipes i'm glad you asked you see i have a little business called gary's wares where i make pipes like this you know this sort of thing um i don't always do uh i don't do exclusively paraphernalia you know um i have made in the past um a, a toddler stacking game a baby rattle um a shelf for my buddy i make all kinds of stuff so if you're interested in the kind of stuff that i make <laughs> sales pitch hit me up on facebook um check out my facebook page gary's wares and so i think that's it I think it's everything. This damn video is too damn long. <laughs> I'll try to shorten them up in the future, but thanks for watching.